But pulling out of a practice that has been done for decades could be problematic to patrons. Where that bullet came out, super scary for everyone involved. Check it out right here, right here on the driver's front windshield. Frankie's family wishes they had done one more thing to keep their girls safe, and that was simply to lock the car doors. Tonight, I'm standing where the Pine River shouldn't be. Check out all of that flooding. Nearly up to my boots and right next to it is a trail that's closed due to all the rising concern. Spotlight shining on me is a source for ETC says they have hundreds of them at the Oscars because without them, the actresses and actors would look a little washed out. This is the hardest part about shoveling with the hover plow. Damage that to a police patrol car, Cat. Yeah, that's right, Amber and Greg. For the last few weeks, we've heard lots of stories about teens driving around town, stealing cars all to drive around in. And this time, it was an unlocked and running BMW that fit the bill. Playing back. 27 News' Catherine Larson is live now in Janesville with how the Rock County Sheriff's Department is helping with this military honor. Catherine. Yeah, Greg, plans have been in the works here for about a week to bring this Marine's body home. And this morning, around 4 a.m., that's when a veteran here at the Rock County Sheriff's Office woke up, all to bring those plans to life. More global perspective. In just 30 days, Glacier Edge made a big change, reducing straws by 81% right here in their cafeteria. Kill this driver. Easily could have the unthinkable right here in this parking lot. Here's what happened. We've got this woman. She's out doing some shopping. She loads her vehicle with her goods. When all of a sudden, this eighth grader, she gets into her vehicle. She drags the woman 30 feet, running her over. And get this, the girl, she says she's done it before. And she would do it again. Now this was wild. We haven't had a carjacking like this that I can remember. Town of Madison's top cop trying to understand what the 13-year-old was thinking. This was dangerous and crazy and just unbelievable to hop into a 45-year-old woman's running and unlocked car. The child uh, backed up, kind of trapping her with the door that was open and drug her about 30 feet. But the nightmare didn't end there. The girl drove forward and ran over her. As the middle school student took off on a joyride. As obviously our community's in danger when she's out on the street. Chief Scott Gregory says that's because of a November carjacking when the eighth grader said this to the arresting officer. She would get another car and I don't give an F. I'll get out and steal another car. I got the scam, whatever you want to call it. We'll call her. How about Anastasia? At 86, we're concealing the woman's identity after she opened her door Sunday to a clean cut con artist with a convincing story. And he said that he had heard it and there was a report in the area that there was contamination in the water. He and his partner hot-footed it in, telling her they were with Madison Water with a warning. A woman up the street, a neighbor of yours by the name of Karen, said she actually got burned. Yeah. So Anastasia let them run the sink. But one con artist insisted she show her basement water source. And I said, oh, and then I said, okay. And he said, you should come down here so you can see if you can tell if there's contamination. And the grifter had some good lines to give this grandma. He talked about his grandmother who had soft skin and she wouldn't, she wouldn't want to be contaminated with, or with water that would burn her skin and he said, you remind me of my grandmother, he said, because you look like you take care of yourself. Anastasia was down in her basement running the water with the con artist for about 20 minutes until the one upstairs yelled, OK, Joe, we're good to go. go. The two were good. The one upstairs made off with thousands of dollars in Anastasia's best jewelry, even a keepsake cross. Sent to me by my brother in 1944 when he was in the Marines in Okinawa. She says the whole ordeal 
has been hard. Those are the things that, that make you really angry to think, and they don't mean a thing to the person that took them. Catherine Larson, 27 News. On a snowy Saturday. She took a route that she doesn't normally take, just thinking the highways would be more clear than they were. A mother of three. Things happen. Things happen, and sometimes it, it hurts you really, really bad. Mary Shimming's grown kids know the pain. Their mother never made it to work that morning at the Polynesian. People do need to slow down, and the speed of the impact was life. You know, it was life. It, it caused the accident in seconds. She was gone. And I'm going to miss her deeply. Mary's children also feel the heartache for Lake Delton firefighter Joe Sobel. Hit while helping move traffic from the crash site. Same for the firefighter, like God bless him. He was only there to help. That's what he was there. And for him to get injured, it broke my heart. But I'm happy that no one else has to go through the pain that we're going through with this loss. Merry Christmas, Jennifer. I love you with, with all, all my heart. heart. And she she loves us. She loves us still with all of our all her heart. That special recorded keepsake book arrived to her daughter the day her mother died. Mary was the kind of mom who loved to make special moments. In fact, even in her car, she had a care package that she was just about to send to Jennifer over in Turkey, filled with all sorts of cards for the year ahead. For the next holidays that are coming up in a bundle, for Valentine's Day, for birthdays, and this is her alive, like she didn't know what was coming. Now, her children have this message. We just need to take our time so that we can get to where you know, we need to go so we can see our loved ones again. Mary's funeral is set for tomorrow, and the family says anyone hoping to attend, well, they hope that you look at the forecast, and if it is just too dangerous to drive, that you simply do not. Reporting live in Middleton. It was a sad day for Janesville. And for the country. That's for sure. A fight between the two broke out. Morality in the United States has gotten horrible says Ken Peterson. I was an Imperial Wizard in the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. You will not replace us! It's very scary. And the KKK of today, scary because Ken lived through it. We are here and we are not going anywhere and that we're standing up for white people's rights. The day that we had that rally in Janesville, you could cut it like a knife. The hate was horrible. It's why he left. Very next day after I felt that hate, seen that hate, seen the violence and the weapons, I had to leave. Leave something, he says, lures so many in. If you're not happy with yourself and happy with your life, they prey on that type of thing. If you've got problems going on, jobs, you know, they, they use so many different angles that you fall into that rhetoric. You almost become brainwashed. At 62, he wishes he could take it all back. Oh my God, yes. My God, yes. I've done everything in my power to change that image. An image, Ken says, was much harder to spread. We did it in the classifieds, and we sent out mailers, and we put flyers on cars, and uh, very little internet back then. But now with social media. It reaches so many millions of people. Ken fears will only escalate. They, they know what they're doing. The Klan's been around for a long time and they know how to indoctrinate people. What do we want? White, White power. power! What do we want? White, White power. power! From Beloit Fire to all 50 states. Just kept watching and then all of a sudden, you know, it showed up at headquarters in a nice box and got it all ready to go. An Olympic bound banner hoisted high over the gateway to Wisconsin. That was pretty cool. Especially knowing the stars and stripes stopped in Beloit. It was like a relay. A relay that took the red, white, and blue everywhere before being gifted to Team USA bobsled and traveling 6,000 miles to South Korea. It's really interesting to know, like, we had it here, and then next thing you know, it potentially was on a dog sled going through Alaska to get to, you know, some of the final destinations. So that Lloyd really Fire cool. Lieutenant Jeremy Flanagan says by luck. Yeah. And an honor guard connection in Illinois. The city became a part of Olympic history. Beloit is, is trying to, 
improve its image and trying to become the best community that it, that it can. And for Beloit to represent Wisconsin with this flag and participating in this flag, in my mind, that's huge. Folding the flag just perfectly takes Beloit Fire about two minutes. But because this was a very special ceremonial Olympic flag, it took them closer to 10 to make sure everything lined up just perfectly. You know, it was get it up, you know, make sure that we've got it and document that we had it here and get it to Minnesota as quick as possible. Because it all began with local fire halls, believing they could fly old glory for an Olympic moment. It really was tying one end of the country to the other, and it was rural and it was urban. So I think that from a philanthropic point of view, I hope they will consider it. Considering Michael Johnson's up early. Hey, anything is possible. Mailing this letter to Walmart about Madison's closing Sam's Club. And make sure that it doesn't become an eyesore and that this proposal could be a win-win situation. Dear Bill, I learned last week that Madison Sam's Club is one of dozens of stores that are closing nationwide. Dane County's Boys and Girls Club president hopes Walmart will donate the warehouse space to turn into a kid's sports complex. You can have a batting cage, a soccer field, a football field, basketball field, a training center for kids and preparing them for employment opportunities. Johnson says what's special about the Sam's Club location isn't just that it's close to the Beltline, but it's also right next to a Walmart. Their parents can literally walk over to the Walmart and, and purchase uh, items for them. This is just an option that they should explore. Miker CPA's David Miker says Walmart would benefit from the deal. They get to deduct the fair market value of the property. So you can avoid the gain um, over the gain that you have, the appreciation, and you get great tax benefit write-offs. Not to mention help Madison fulfill a decades-old need. Talk to any organization that runs sports programs for kids. We don't have a sports complex in the city, and it's a huge burden. One a 110,000 square feet big box store could fix. So it would be phenomenal if we could partner with Walmart to do something like this. Is there? Catherine Larson, 27 News. Grant County 911. We got a bath bomb that they were taking a bath, and whatever's in their bath bomb they got yesterday is burning their skin. Seconds went by, their skin began getting redder and redder. They began crying out louder and louder. Whoa! Mom Molly LaRue still can't believe her girls were hurt by something they use all the time. I would say three, maybe a week. But Sunday, December 3rd, was different. My first thoughts as a mom was, what did somebody put in this? And what did I just do to my kids? Luckily, the skin irritations faded, but not the concern for you this Christmas. Just be very careful about where you're purchasing them um, and know what you're, you know, what you're gonna put into your kiddo's bath. It's really up in the air what's inside one of these bath bombs, especially when they're bought at a mall kiosk, just like the one that did all the damage. And you wanna see an ingredient list and know what you're putting on your skin. UW Health Dermatologist Dr. Apple Bodemer cautions against buying from just anybody. She doesn't treat the girls, but doesn't doubt they had a chemical reaction to the fizzy product. A lot of those chemicals will dry the skin out. So even if they're not having a really aggressive reaction like those little girls had, it might contribute to more dryness. Um, and especially coming into winter, that's not so great for, for young skin. As this family now runs the bath without the fizzy fun. Yeah, it's, it's very scary. Catherine Larson, 27 News. 27 News. It was such a tragedy, and people were climbing over the top of people trying to get out of there. Fathers frantically trying to find their sons. He said, Gloria, he said, I can't get a hold of anybody. I don't know if he's alive or if he's dead. You know, he's, he was crying. Gloria Schulte's 16-year-old nephew, Gabe, life flighted to Vanderbilt Hospital in Nashville. He got shot in the cheek. It went through this cheek and then out through the bone on the other side. Gloria's nephew now undergoing serious surgery. It was awful. While her other teenage nephew, Devin, an eyewitness to the nightmare, recovers from the shock.
he heard the gunshots and he was in the gym and he ran to the locker room. He said he got into his locker and hid. Hid while the horror at Marshall County School played out and the gunman almost found his hiding spot. He said, I just didn't breathe. He said, I just was so scared and I was just shaking. You don't think it's going to happen to you, but it, it could. Pray for Gage. My nephew was shot in the face. It's why over social media, Gloria's family asking for prayers. We had prayers out all over the country, all over the world. Gloria even has prayers for the 15-year-old gunman and his family. Touch their hearts. Just touch their hearts. I know that they're going through some terrible t time, too, right now. Please, 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 please pray for him and all that are effective. Catherine Larson, 27 News. New at 6, a uh, below.